Okay, Priscilla, you wanted it, you got it. Guess what? You won the bet. Anyways, guys, let's get to it. How you doing, guys? Some months ago, I talked about my hippie neighbor. And over the last few months, many of you had requested I do an update. So I will. Hasn't been quiet around here. He's actually flipped his lid. <clears throat> I think I mentioned in my last video how my neighbor across the street had fired a flare gun at his house. I finally got the backstory, what had happened. Now, this guy was a captain on, on a boat, so he was away for maybe a few days or sometimes a week at a time. What I didn't know, because I was at work. While he was away at work, the hippie neighbor would go across the street, knocking at the door, hitting up on his wife, trying to proposition her for sex. And... She's a nice kid. She really didn't wasn't interested. She just kept kind of pushing him away. And it got so bad, she had no choice but to tell her husband. Well, they had it out. And he's in a state of denial over it. Finally, he, with his stupid mouth, he came out and finally admitted what he did. And then started going after him. The guy got so pissed off at him. And when he went back to his house, he took the flare gun and shot it in his front door. And I'm surprised the place didn't burn down. Well, after that, he stopped talking to him across the street, kind of kept to himself. Now, I never really had any problems with him. He'd chit-chat with me on occasion, but he was a little too earthy for me, so I avoided the conversation at all cost. And he kind of faulted me for that. It was a night some months ago. He was having a shouting match with the neighbor on the other side. Now, apparently, it was a boundary dispute. Now, this guy bought the house, and he never had the property surveyed. So he wasn't quite sure where the property lines were. It was getting to be a nightly basis where they would argue back and forth, back and forth. And it was getting annoying. I was sitting outside minding my own business. Just, it was just getting too noisy. It got to the point where this neighbor on the other side had built a privacy fence. Now he had no one to play with. He started crying to me how nobody in the neighborhood liked him. Why can't we all just get along? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Just go. I'm, I'm just sitting here minding my own business. Well, he kind of got a little upset with me because I wouldn't converse with him about this. And frankly... I don't want to talk to you either. He didn't seem to get that through his head. <clears throat> now, this guy had gotten a dog. And he didn't believe in leashes. Now, there's, there's a reason why there are leash laws. He would let this dog run, around, run amok, run throughout the neighborhood. Now, he'd had dogs before. And they were killed by traffic. They were all hit by vehicles. Now, I don't know if anybody has ever seen a dog get hit by a car. It's not a pretty sight. And I personally did not want to see this dog get hit. I don't want to see any dog get hit by a car. But he kept letting this dog run loose. The neighbors up the street, several of them would always end up bringing the dog back. Is this your dog? Oh, yes, it is. Charlie, get over here. Now, he would be out in the yard. And he would never have a clue that the dog ran off. And this was even at night. Now, this was a black dog, so you're not going to see a black dog at night. But he's got this thing about doing his yard work at night because the Florida sun is just too hot. So he'll mow his lawn at night, do all his yard work at night. He's got a, a workshop in his backyard, and he's got his power tools all night. And I've had more shouting matches with this idiot for that. Now, I'd be sitting outside. And I'd watch the dog run up the street. 
And he's sitting there talking to the dog like he was still there. And he didn't even have a clue that the dog was gone. Well, he'd go take a walk around, and then he'd get in his vehicle and drive up the street. We recently had a girl that bought a house across the street from me. Nice kid. Very sociable. So, I'm very sociable with people that are smoking in the neighborhood. She's actually got very interesting conversation. There was one night he spotted her. I guess he bullseyed right on her. He figured, that's mine. And he was over there talking to her one night, chit-chatting, la, 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 la. And he had his dog with him, and he's explaining how he was training this dog, and he figured it was a done deal. She was belonged to him. He didn't understand. She was very social, very nice, but she wasn't interested. Well, the dog continued to get away, and she inquired about it, and I says, yeah, he... he doesn't have a clue when that dog runs loose. Now, she had a dog, too. And she just, she keeps a close eye on this dog. And she was really upset that he just let this dog run loose, as was the entire neighborhood getting tired of retrieving this dog for him. Well, he got under my skin. There was a couple of times. Now, I get up very early. I usually get up at 2 a.m. And I like to have coffee outside in the nice weather. It's one morning I'm having coffee and this dog he had outside and the dog wandered over and I didn't see it because it was black as spade. It starts barking in my ear. I turn around, I jumped out of my skin and I scream, Roger, get your effing dog. Come here, Charlie. No, dude, come over here and grab your dog. I tried to get the dog's collar, but the dog ran off. This went on for several nights, and the dog would keep getting away. The dog would run up the street. He'd have to get in his vehicle and drive around. I finally had it with it. Dude, I don't want to do it, but I will call animal control. You've got to put that dog on a leash. Oh, I don't believe in putting dogs on leashes. I said, dude, and I really don't want to see the dog get hit by a car either, but I also don't want to have the dog sneak up on me in my own yard either. Keep a better eye on the dog. The girl across the street. He would just watch and wait for her to walk her dog. And all of a sudden, he would just start to walk his dog just to, so he could walk along. Now, she was starting to freak out. And she mentioned it to me. He said, I can't go outside without him coming over. I just wish he'd leave me alone. I don't want any problems with anybody. And I says, I know, I know, it'll wear off. It didn't wear off. Well, we had a shouting match. One of my neighbors was over. And my neighbor doesn't care what he says. He said something along, now we were having an argument about the dog. He said something along the lines he was going to have sex with his dog. And we're laughing at him. He called the police. Well, my neighbor left. Police showed up. Now I'm sitting out in the front yard and... This one cop comes over and says, hey, I'm officer so-and-so. I'm just new in the area. I just want to introduce myself to the neighbors. And I'm thinking, no, you're not introducing. I'm thinking to myself, you're not introducing yourself. He called the cops. Well, he inquired about a certain problem with certain neighbors. And I'm, I knew right now. But apparently, the way the phone call was relayed to dispatch, they weren't taking it too serious. And they were, kind of found it laughable. Because this guy couldn't get this smirk off his face. And he inquired about the neighbor that he had words with. And he said, okay, well, just kind of stay away from that neighbor if you can. I says, I would love to. This continued. One day I had a neighbor over. One of the neighbors was over. Now, this guy's a good-sized guy. And he knew we had issues with his dog. And he'd be over in his yard mumbling, bitching to himself. Nobody likes me. They don't like my dog. I don't know what kind of drugs this guy was doing, but he come bombing over. You want my dog? You want my dog? Well, my neighbor didn't think twice. He came up, charged him. He hauled off and caught him in the chest. Now, this hippie is very fragile, very frail. He crumbled and went down. Well, we're both looking at his carcass laying on the ground. What do you want to do? Just leave him there. He'll wake up, which he did. 
hour and a half later, the police show up. And we pointed out, he, he couldn't be hurt that bad if, if he calls you an hour and a half later. And they were late that they weren't taking him too serious. Just avoid him. Next night, neighbor's over again. We're talking. Now we could hear him mumbling. He's trying to instigate something. Now we're talking amongst ourselves, but he wasn't happy unless he was stirring the pot. Finally, my neighbor, in reference to the girl across the street, Oh, by the way, Donna can't stand you. That hit him below the belt. Apparently, he had the hot scar so bad when he heard that. That kind of devastated him. Because he was fixated on her. And she's flat out not interested in this son of a bitch. He went over one night. I don't know what they're telling you about me, but they're wrong. And she flat out, look, I get along with everybody in the neighborhood. I don't want any drama. And he says, but they're making stuff up about me. And she's trying to push him away, push him away. And he kept on going. And he didn't realize. By continuing with his mouth like this, he was making himself out to be a bigger asshole than he really was. Now, his best bet would have been not to respond to that at all. But he didn't understand that. This goes on to this day. And I'm sure there'll be more issues. But he watches this poor girl. And I, he can't get it through to say, she, you are not in her league. She's got her shit together. She's got her own house. She's got her own business. You're a piece of trash. Your mommy and daddy own your house. Frankly, I don't know how old this guy is. He's either maybe around my age, maybe a little younger, maybe a little older. And he still acts like a freaking little kid. But he finally realized one thing. See, nobody was giving him any attention, and he realized negative attention was better than no attention. And I figured that's the way he's been his whole life. But frankly, I don't care to talk to him. I got better things to do. Now, with people like this, they will play the victim. See, everybody else is wrong. One thing I tried to point out, okay, you had problems with Adam across the street. You had problems with Willie on the other side. As soon as Adam was gone and Willie put up the fence, you had issues over on this side. So are we all wrong? No, you are wrong. And again, he's like, why can't we just get along? And he didn't seem to understand. Getting along doesn't mean we all have to sit around, hold hands, and walk around the campfire. Getting along means you stay over there. I'll stay over here. But he doesn't see it that way. Unfortunately... He's not the only person like this. I bring this up because of a video that was sent to me a little over a week ago. Yes, you got it. Percy Pudwack. Now he also realized one thing. Negative attention is better than no attention. Now he's come back with another channel. He revamps them all the time. He comes and goes, comes and goes, comes and goes. And it hasn't registered to him at this time. Every time he comes back, it's like, what now? People are like, what do you want? Almost like everybody's going to forget what he is, what he did. Well, on average, I check this channel. He'll get like 14 views on a video. Maybe 20. The only videos that he gets over 100... A videos where he's coming after me, Mike and Kim, and now just not just us, but pretty much every XJW that doesn't watch his channel. He's faulting all of us for not watching his channel. We're all assholes. He's not even getting any comments. And the only reason people are getting watching his videos where he's coming after me or Mike and Kim is because it's like a train wreck. You can't turn away from a train wreck. People want to see what's, where it's going to come out. Not that they're really interested, because people aren't even commenting anymore. Well, apparently he thought the first one would stir the pot. Somebody would come out and come after him. That's the attention he craves. He can't get positive attention, so he, he shoots for the negative. Well, a few days went by. Maybe a week, I don't know.
Nothing happened. No comments. No videos. No response. People just aren't interested because they know his game. They'll watch the videos, but there are virtually no comments on his channel. Well, apparently one wasn't enough. He had to make a second one, stir the pot even more. And at the end of one of the second one, he says, and I guarantee maybe Vinny Vincent or Mike and Kim are going to make a video. I'll bet on it. Okay, dude, you won the bet. Personally, I don't think Mike and Kim could even bother with a piece of shit like you. But you're angry. Because you think that everybody should be your friend. Dude, not everybody is cut out for everybody. And frankly, dude, you're not the most likable guy in the world. And anybody who has to emphasize, I'm a good-hearted person. I'm a nice guy. Anybody who's got to emphasize that is a piece of shit. Because, dude, no, you are not a nice guy. You are not a good-hearted person. You're a royal piece of trash that can't make up his mind what he wants. So you follow a spooky lady around. She's your puppet master. See, apparently you didn't have enough of male influence in your life. Women guide you. And you fall to all XJWs because they don't want to hear the real truth. Well, dude, let's get one thing straight. People had the so-called truth pounded into their heads for so many years. When they hear that, it's an alarm. They don't want to hear anybody else. I have the truth. Because, frankly, you're full of shit, dude. Because you do not have the real truth. You're speculation like anybody else. And you're angry because nobody wants to watch. You're angry because nobody wants to support you. Let's get one thing clear. Why nobody will support your channel? This is, dude, they know in another month you're going to be gone again. One day you'll come up with a video and say, I'm leaving YouTube. You go for that, play that sympathy card again, trying to make everybody feel sorry for you. Dude, you've played that eight, nine times over the last five years. Dude, either make a channel and stick with it or leave. But every time you pull a channel, delete it, come back and start another one, dude, it's the same shit. Over and over and over again. At least the crybaby in Croatia, and he is a crybaby too, just not as bad as you. But at least he sticks with it. He's had the one channel, and he keeps going. But dude, you get your vagina bruised, and you pull your channel. Then you come back, and you blame everybody. You call everybody assholes because they don't want to watch your channel. Nobody is obligated to watch your channel. Nobody is obligated to watch anybody's channel, dude. You cannot dictate what, who watches your videos, how many views you go. Dude, you've come out with so many videos, and I don't want to see any less than 100 views on my videos. Dude, you can't dictate that because people don't have to want, watch you if they don't want to. And why am I taking this so personal? It's five years ago... When you first came out, I think it was five years ago, I was the first one that promoted your channel like a dumbass. And now I'm wishing I had watched a little bit more of your content. This is you up mainly the reason I will not promote a new channel now. Because shortly after I promoted your channel, you made a possum's pecker out of me. Because you turned out to be the biggest crybaby. You weren't getting views. You weren't getting subscribers. Dude, you, you want to know why? Because your content sucks. Your personality sucks. Dude, you've got no personality. You've got the charisma of a stone. Wake up and smell the coffee. But quit your fucking bitching. Stop coming after me. Stop going after Mike and Kim. Because frankly, they couldn't be bothered. And as far as what you did with Jess, I'm surprised you actually even mentioned that. Dude, Yes, they forgave you. Even after you propositioned her for sex, behind her husband's back. Yes, they forgave you. But forgiving somebody doesn't mean they have to let you back in. They opted to keep a distance, a safe distance, because you burnt their trust. That was your fault, not theirs. And as far as Smurf Girl goes, dude, you creeped that girl out from the get-go. From day one. She also... You are not even her league, dude. 
Don't waste your time. You got some work to do on you before you even try to get a partner to do because you got some major issues, way too many issues. You can say people got a low vibration. Spooky lady can say they got a low vibration. The people who claim they have a higher vibration generally have no vibration. And you, dude, have no vibration. Anyways, guys, I'm going a little bit over here. You all have a good day. I got a few things I got to do this week. I'll be talking to you soon.